All right, all right. Ain't nothing wrong with showing love. <laughs> nothing wrong with showing love. The more love you show, the more love you give out. Love is reciprocal. When you give it out, it comes back. When you demonstrate love to others, somebody will demonstrate love to you. All right. On this Valentine's Day, hope somebody's demonstrating love to you. Okay, let's go to the Word of God. Uh, Doc Stokes uh, preached for, uh, uh, I'd rather preach. Uh, yeah, he's a preacher too. He did preach and <laughs> delivered a dynamic word on last Sunday. Uh, but uh, we thank God for him. Thank God for uh, Brother Mario. Thank God for Brother King, Brother Poole. Thank God for all of them and how they are helping to keep the ministry of the word going on during this pandemic for new Sardis and uh, abroad. All right. Uh, we want to look at the word today from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, Dr. Stokes did read that uh, chapter for us, uh, which is uh, the chapter that we will focus on in terms of our word for today. But we're going to zero in for our sermonic discourse. We're going to zero in on um, the 13th verse of the 13th chapter of First Corinthians, which many of you know is often referred to as a love chapter. Uh, and don't, I think it's only befitting that uh, since this is Valentine's weekend, everybody's focused on the thought and the idea of love, that we deal with that topic just a little bit. Hopefully it'll be at a fine. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pause just now to look to you, uh, asking for your divine help, Lord, as we present and proclaim uh, your word, Lord. I pray that you help me preach, not for form, nor for fashion, but Lord, to the end, somebody uh, would hear a word from the Lord. And uh, as a result, Lord, that they might want to turn to you and surrender their lives unto you to know true love and to know what life is all about. Anoint hearts, anoint heads, anoint ears, Lord, right now as we go forth in your word. Bless everyone that's under the sound of my weak voice, oh God. Bless them. Bless those who are on now, those who will come on, those who will listen at a later date. We pray, Father, that your spirit will be the guiding force, Lord, as we relate to this, your holy word. Lord, we realize that uh, you are God and beside you there is none other. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. Help us to develop and continue to grow in our relationship with you. Lord, we love you today. We pray for grace that we can love you more. We know you love us. You, know, you demonstrated that a long time ago. Pray for all those that need a word today, a word from you, Lord. Pray for those who need a touch of healing from you. We pray for them. We pray for them that need comforting today. Lord, comfort in the name of Jesus, even as you promised. Do these few things for us. We'll ever we will be so careful to give your name to praise, to give you the glory and to give you the honor. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And for, for his sake, we do uh, humbly pray, amen. And uh, thank God. All right. From that 13th verse of uh, 1 Corinthians, Chapter 13, we're going to find these words, if you will. And this is coming from the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, he says, and now, <laughs> and now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. All right, the etymological uh, breakdown from the Greek of the word charity will render us the word love. All right, so we will just say love. 
faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Good morning, Sister Miles. God bless you. The great of these is love. I want to talk to you, uh, if you will, uh, for a few moments from this thought. Uh, true confessions of real love. True confessions of real love. <laughs> Amen. There used to be a magazine, uh, I guess you call it a, a, a woman's magazine. It was written for, I understand, women from the ages of 25 to 40, I think it was. And it was a, 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 mag a publication entitled, or a magazine entitled, True Confessions. And it was a, it was a, 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 a magazine about romantic stories for women about love, about love. I, I guess it's still in print. <laughs> I guess it's still in print. I know it started around 1920, around 1918, and all down through my years, I remember seeing them on the shelf. Uh, it was entitled True Confessions, True Confessions, okay. But today, I want to talk about true confession, not of some romantic story, so some erotic love story, but I want to talk about true confessions of real love, true confessions of real love. Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is Love, true confession of real love. Now, now I know today, today is Valentine's Day, Valentine's weekend, you know, been all kinds of manifestations of uh, presentations of love demonstrated through giving of chocolates and flowers and, you know, a host of different things uh, with the connotation that, you know, uh, uh, man loves woman, woman loves man, you know, and even uh, the other thing too, I guess, going on today. But uh, confessions about love. And often it was done, I, I guess still being done, for reasons that suggest that they love the other party. But oftentimes, it was just some semblance of love. It wasn't true love. It wasn't real love. It wasn't the essence of what love is. The best it would have been in many instances is what's referred to as eros, the erotic aspect of love. But I want to chat, to chat with you for a few minutes about true confessions of real love, true confessions of real love. There is, there is, there is, amen. Uh, the Old Testament scripture, Genesis chapter two around verse seven. And uh, it talks about uh, how uh, man, God, breathed into the nostrils of man uh, his breath, and man became a living soul, a living soul. Now, we, we have to confess that if God blew his breath into man, okay, and man became a living soul, it was the result of God entering into that man. It was the image of God uh, put into that man. Not only the spirit aspect of God, not only the uh, trichotomy of that aspect of God, but also the essence of love. The essence of love was Put in man, such that man has to, and no matter who he is, where he's come from, 
what his status, okay? And when I say man, I'm speaking generically. Uh, man has the uh, propensity to want to love and to be loved. Why? Because God in his essence is love, okay? And so the way God formed us, the way God created us, he created us as uh, images of himself in love. And if God is love, then there's some aspect of our human existence that must be a reflection of him as far as love is concerned. And I mean what real love is all about. No matter who you are, where you come from, where you're going, what your pedigree, no matter what your aspirations, no matter what your nationality, what your culture, no matter what your background, uh, why, where you're going, every, it is the essence of every man to want to be loved and to love. That's the way God made us. God made us that way. Man wants to be loved and he wants to love. Somebody say it's better in terms of a relationship uh, with the opposite sex, I would uh, would deduce that they were referring to, that uh, it is better uh, to have uh, loved and, you know, been hurt, have, if you will, than to have never known love. It's better to love and to be hurt than not to be hurt and to never have known love, okay? Man wants to be loved and man has to love. He looks for an object to love. He loves, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the English language, in the English language, uh, we use the word love in a very generic sense. We talk about loving ice cream. We talk about loving cake. We talk about loving cars. We talk about love our children, love our wife. And there's just one word for love. Just we love, okay, in the English language. But in the Greek, there are three different, foundationally, three different words for love. You have eros, you have philio, philio and you have uh, agape, okay? Uh, this this weekend primarily is probably been about, I, and I'm just uh, deducing, I don't know, but primarily been about uh, eros, that erotic aspect of love, that love that pertains to uh, the sexual uh, promiscuity <laughs> of mankind. But then you have phileo, which is about brotherly love, about the kind of love that uh, you should have one for another as, as um, uh, biological family members, you know, uh, as uh, uh, husband and wife. That's what, uh, that's where Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania gets its name from, from Philio, okay? The city, and it's referred to as a city of brotherly love, okay? But then you have agape, okay? Which is uh, the love of God, which is the love I want to talk about. Uh, and I want to talk about true confessions of real love, true confession of real love. I'm not talking about just confessing an uh, aspect of love for the sake of some uh, physical gratification or uh, for some desire to receive from the other uh, individual. But I'm talking about uh, a true confession of a real love, a demonstration of love that um, it supersedes any other aspect of love. I'm talking about uh, a love that is, was demonstrated by Christ, uh, by God through Christ for mankind. 
And that's really what I want to uh, uh, deal with as I go forward this morning. God, as I say, blew into his nostrils of man, uh, his breath. He became a living soul, and he blew into his nostrils also the essence of who he is. God is love. Hello, somebody. God is love. Now, when we look at this text uh, uh, for this morning, we, we're, we're thinking about the fact that chapter uh, uh, 13 of 1 Corinthians is a love chapter, and we look at uh, why Paul uh, felt the need to uh, write this uh, chapter uh, because of what was going on in the Corinthian church. Well, uh, chapter 13 uh, is, is here because of what Paul has written primarily in uh, uh, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 gives rise to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, okay? Yes, so it starts in, in the 12th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians. In, 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 in uh, the Corinthian church, there were things that were going on that uh, wasn't very lovely and loving, uh, supposedly, of God's children. <clears throat> and so Paul felt the need, pardon me, to pin some uh, 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 scripture, some uh, give us some word from God to better help us to understand what divine love looks like and how it should behave itself and what's the essence of divine love is all about. You see, divine love is preeminent. Divine love, the agape love, is not only preeminent, it is permanent. Divine love is prominent. And actually, the whole Bible is a love book. The whole Bible is a love story. You want to talk about a true confession magazine, a love magazine, a love book? Listen, you get in the Bible, and the Bible will give you story after story about what real love is all about. And so when we look at this church uh, in Corinthian, in, in Corinth, it was a church that were demonstrating uh, uh, behavior that wasn't reflective of the true love of God. Help me, somebody. It wasn't true. Yes, it was a church. Yes, it was talking about knowing God. But when we look at the behavior and you look at how they were acting one toward another, it said very little about the essence of real love. And so I want to talk about the true confession of real love, all right? Uh, the first thing I'd like to mention to us is that, and, and I want to look at faith, hope, and love. I want to look at these two before I actually get to, get to uh, uh, agape love. I want to look at Faith. What is what is faith? The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right. We need faith. We 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 need faith. The Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please God. Isn't that what the scriptures say? It's impossible to please Him. But with faith, yes. All things are possible. Yes, we, we need faith. Faith, which is a persuasion about the truthfulness uh, about, about who Jesus is. Amen. And we have to have faith in order to appropriate Christ in our own lives so as to experience salvation. Yes, we have to have faith. Without faith, Christ will never become a reality in your life. Faith is a necessary 
force and source in order to function in a relationship with God. Ephesians 2 and uh, 8 says, for by grace are we saved through faith and that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God and not of works lest any man should boast. You, you really know, you wanna know what faith is? Faith is something that God gives to us in order to uh, develop a relationship with him. Yes, without faith, we can't de develop a relationship with almighty God. And we can't man 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 uh, manufacture faith. God gives us a degree of faith. The Bible says uh, God gives every man, every man, a measure of faith. And he's given us all that measure of faith. It's up to us as to what we do with it. It's like a parent that gives uh, a, a child a cell phone and he gives the child a cell phone that the child may stay in touch with the parent, you know? He gives the child, the parent gives the child a cell phone so that the child can stay in touch with the parent and the parent in touch with the child. God gives us faith so that we can embrace Jesus as our savior. We can't manufacture it. God gives us the faith in order to believe that. That's what the verse says. For by grace through faith are we saved. Amen. Not a works lest any man should boast. Okay. And so God gives us the gift of faith to so that we can believe on uh, Almighty God. Faith is a necessary source. Okay a necessary source if we're going to ever have a relationship with God. Faith is making real that which we cannot see with a natural mind. Faith makes Jesus real. If you don't have faith, if you don't demonstrate that faith, you will never see the reality of who Jesus is. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith makes the word real and the word makes faith a reality. And so we need faith. Faith is a necessary source, but not only faith, but uh, Paul says faith, hope, okay, and love. Now, the next thing is hope. He talks about the necessity of hope. Hope, hope, and expectation of some preferred outcome, <laughs> okay? Uh, I hope that it's going to snow tomorrow, <laughs> okay? The weatherman say it's going to, but that's my hope. I haven't seen it yet, but I hope it's going to occur. That's my preference. Listen, a man that doesn't have hope, a woman doesn't have hope, they're living in despair because hope gives you a reason to want to live. Hope gives direction. Hope gives uh, ambition. Hope gives inspiration. Uh, a person that's hopeless seemingly has no uh, reason for living. Listen, let, let me parenthetically say something right here. That may be uh, the reality uh, what's going on in many of the black uh, urban areas of our country with all of the shooting and the killing of these uh, young men uh, that's dying before they get out of their 20s and many before they get out of their teenage years. It may be because they have no hope. They look on the horizon of this world and they look on the activities and the uh, situation of this world. They look at the politics, they look at the people, they look at the predicaments of what's going on and it renders them hopeless. They have no desire of some preferred outcome. You've gotta have hope. 
You've got to believe things are going to get better. you got to believe if you hang in there, things will improve. You know, there's some people have a fatalistic aspect when it comes to this virus. They act like, okay, this virus is the end all. No, you know, particularly as it pertains to the church of God, they act like it's the end all, okay? That, uh, okay, we can't go to church now, and so we're just all over, and I might as well, you know, uh, stop tithing, stop giving, you know, stop talking to my brothers and say, no, 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 no. That's a hopeless mindset. We have hope that one day we're going to be back in a building in a time of fellowship with our brothers and our sisters. Don't throw in the towel. Don't think that this virus is going to be an end all. No, no, no. What's going to end all is when Jesus comes back. <laughs> That's when it's going to be the end when he comes back. It's not going to be this virus. Listen, we got to have hope. We got to have hope. We got to give our children hope. We got to give our grandchildren hope. Yes, that things can get better. I don't care how bad it looks. You got to believe that things will get better. We need faith. Yes, we do. And we need hope. But the greatest of these, Paul says, is love. Why? Why? Because faith and hope is only temporary sources. They're only temporary as attributes. Uh, love is an internal, it is a permanent, prominent, okay, uh, uh, attribute. When faith and love is gone, love will still be enforced. The agape love is an everlasting love. When all is gone, the love of God will still be functioning. So the first thing I wanted to say to us this morning is that love supersedes spirituality. When you look at this text and, and consider what gives rise to it, love supersedes spirituality. Well, in this church in Corinth, they had some gifts. They had the sign gifts. They had some speaking gifts, and they were acting like these gifts were the end all. And if you didn't have these gifts, then, you know, uh, you were inferior to them. And Paul, back in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, had to let them know that, oh, no, uh-uh, uh, the body of Christ is so put together that every gift is needed, be it a sign gift, be it a speaking gift, no matter what the gift. It is needed, and he demonstrated that by talking about the anatomy of the human body in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He said, you know what? We need the ears, we need the hands, we need the feet, we need the eyes, we need the arms, we need the legs, we need every aspect of the spiritual body, okay? All right? Well, he said, actually, the most inferior is the most important. <laughs> if you don't think uh, the little toe is important, you stump that bad boy at night. <laughs> and, and you hurt that bad boy and the toenail come off. You'll see how important that little member is. Every member of the body of Christ is important. Amen? Every member is important. And Paul had to uh, talk about that in terms of um, of the gift of love. He said, now all these gifts are important, just like all the members of the body is important. But then he jumps over in uh, uh, chapter 13. At the conclusion of chapter 12, he says, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. And the more excellent way is when he delves into 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and start talking about love. Amen. And so, uh, love, true love, uh, real love supersedes spirituality. That's the first confession is true love, real love supersedes spirituality. It doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are. Notice what he says in verse one and two of uh, 
uh, chapter 13. He says, <laughs> he starts talking about the gifts and he talks about them in such a way that uh, he helps us to understand what's important. He says, though I speak with the tongues, he said, though I speak with the tongues of me and the angel and have uh, not charity, I am become a sound and brass and a tinkling symbol. You hear what he said? Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become sound and brass and tinkling symbol. In other words, if uh, you have gifts, singing gifts, play instrumental gifts, okay, and you can make all kind of music. He said, if these gifts are not uh, uh, motivated by love, he said, you are just uh, a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. In other words, you are making noise, amen, but you're not making an impact, okay? Yeah, you are making noise, but you're not making an impact. And that's the way it is in a lot of churches, okay, as it were. Uh, they made noise, a lot of noise, but they were not making an impact. A lot of singing going on, a lot of music going on, okay? But they were not making an impact, all right? That was the first thing he says. He says, if you speak, you got speaking gifts, you can preach and prophesy and all this kind of stuff. But if it's not motivated by love, and if it's not about love, then it doesn't mean anything. No matter how good you sound, no matter how you can hoop it out, it doesn't matter if it's not motivated by love. And then he said, though I speak, he said, though I have the gift of prophecy and, and understand all ministry. Notice the word all in, he said, in, in these verses. He says, all, 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 understand all. Uh, mysteries. I mean, this is all. This is all. This is total. This is conclusive. When he says all, oh, it's everything. Covers everything. He said. Uh, he said, have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge. And I have faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity. He says, I am nothing. You you can have uh, these gifts. People think. Because they have gifts, you know, it makes them spiritual. But if you don't have love, <laughs> if you don't have love, it's not motivated by love. And so love supersedes spirituality. You can be uh, all kind of movement, but if not motivated by the master and his love, then it doesn't mean anything. He says it profits me nothing. He said, he says, I am nothing. A life without love is an empty life. A life without the love of God. Oh, yeah, you can have filio, filio and uh, eros, but if you don't have agape, you are an empty vessel. Hallelujah. In terms of impacting and doing any good, you're an empty vessel. I read something the other day as I was preparing for this word. I was reading something, and this is for husbands and wives. It kind of struck me because it struck me when I read it. <laughs> it said, real love starts in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let y'all figure that one out yourselves. <laughs> it said, real love starts in the kitchen. That's, that's for husbands and wives, I guess, okay? But uh, we didn't really realize that if we don't have True love. I, I'm not talking about eros and filio. I'm talking about agape, okay? Faith, hope, love, okay? But the greatest of these, we need faith. We need uh, hope. But the greatest of these is love because lo real love supersedes uh, spirituality, no matter what you give. He's, then he goes on to say that this, this is the ultimate of this idea of having gifts and being spiritual, this is the ultimate. He said, though I give my body uh, to be burned, you see that? He said, though I give my body, that's in verse three, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, that's giving up everything, all your finances to feed the poor. He said, I'm giving up everything, okay, to feed the poor. 
And then he says, though I give my body to be burned. That, that's all you got is your body. I give that. <laughs> well, think of the impact of what Paul is saying here. No matter how spiritual you are, but if you don't have love mixed with it, he says right here, uh, he says, it profiteth me nothing. Give my body to be Listen, the Muslims always become a modern. They're tying bums to themselves, going into uh, populated areas, you know, and then igniting the bums, and they become martyrs. They're giving their bodies. But if they don't have the love of God, hallelujah to his name, if they don't have true love, huh? I I'm confessing the word here today. If they don't have true love, you know, they just, uh, uh, <laughs> like my friends say, they just uh, 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 a piece of uh, uh, burnt toast. <laughs> That's all they are. They gave their bodies to be burned. They just became a crispy critter. That's it. <laughs> a crispy critter with no profit. <laughs> you can give your body to be burned, but if you don't have the real love of God, amen, not motivated by the love of God, it's nothing. I'm giving you some true confessions today. But not only is uh, 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 does, does, does real love uh, supersede uh, spirituality, true love and real love supersede status. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want to say. It supersedes status. It supersedes um, spirituality, but it supersedes status. And that comes from uh, also those verses that I read earlier uh, uh, right here in First Corinthians chapter 13, uh, 3, uh, chapter 1 and 2, and then 3 and 4, okay? And uh, verse 5 says you can do all that, but if you don't have love, it profits you nothing. And then verses 5 and 6 says uh, true love does not behave itself uh unseemingly okay yeah it does not does not want to always have its way true love doesn't want to always have its way it's my way or no way that's not true love and then verse six talks about does not rejoice in iniquity doesn't rejoice in the downfall of other people doesn't uh, is not happy to see other people hurting in the body of Christ, all right? So love supersedes spirituality, but love also supersedes status. Paul is saying here uh, that, uh, see, people do things and they don't do things out of the right motive. They do things for status. Listen, when you, when you call yourself feeding the poor or helping somebody that needs help, if it's about you when you're doing that, then you have missed the boat, okay? Because it's not to be about you. It is to be about the people that you're helping. Some people, and that's kind of a narcissistic narcissistic uh, 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 personality. You know, everything has got to be about you. Even when you're helping somebody, it's got to be about you. The spotlight has to be on you. People want to uh, capitalize on other people to, uh, uh, to, to, to intensify a man or to magnify their status in life. And that's just not what true love is all about. It does not rejoice in the downfall of other people. It does not seek to build itself up by tearing other people down. That's that's not it. That's not the motive of true love. When you got to tear somebody else down to build yourself up, that is not the love of God. That is not true love. No, no. When you rejoice to see others downfall because you, th you think it makes you look better, okay? All right? And when you do things just to get your name called, 
That's not uh, behavior motivated by love. It's not. It is just not motivated by love when you do things to get a plaque, okay? When you do things to have your name read in the public, when you do things for status sake, that is not the true love of God. If you don't do it from your heart, you know, whether your name is read or not, whether you get a plaque or not, that, okay, it, 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 that's, that's what true love is all about. Help me, somebody. I'm trying to preach here uh, this word for us today, talking about what true love is. Yeah, it's not about what I've done, but it's what God has done for us. And that's why I do what I do. I am a servant because of what God has done for me. He's been the ultimate servant and I'm following him in servanthood. Oh, I wish I had time. Yes, it is for, 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 for status that oftentimes people do what they do rather than to do what they do for service. Yes, people will reveal who they are if you just watch their motives, okay? They'll reveal, they'll reveal it, okay? When they come to you and I've had it happen many times. They come and you forget and leave their name off the program or forget to call their name and you would think you done cussed them out. Hallelujah. You cussed them out because you left the name out. Okay. Well, that reveals something about the motive of that purpose. Why did you do what you do? We have to really search ourselves. We have to, I have to search myself. I really do. Why do I do? what I do, why, what, and when. All of those things are important in terms of status, okay? If I don't do it because of Christ, if I don't do it because of the love of Christ, if I don't do it because I want to give God glory, then I have missed the mark. He goes on to say in verses six, you'll notice how many times he said, uh, verses five through six, I keep my, uh, my my word keeps going off here and go back to it and bring it back up. But that's all right. I can do that. It'll take but a minute. Uh, but I, I want to look at the verses where it talks about verses five and six. It says, love, uh, verse, uh, does not behave itself unseemly. Seek if not her own. That's, that's an unselfish spirit. Okay, that's true love. Uh, is not uh, easily provoked, think if no evil, rejoice if not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Okay? Yeah. If, 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 if I'm rejoicing in the downfalls of others, something is wrong with my motive in terms of my service for God. Verse 5 and 6, you see the word itself, itself, itself meaning that uh, true love is not selfish, it's not self-seeking, it's not self-satisfying. Love doesn't seek to be its own, uh, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't seek to, 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 to be its own spokesperson. It lets others do that. Love seeks, doesn't uh, tear down other people, no. Uh, who God has lifted up, uh-uh, you know, uh, and we do that. We get jealous of other people that God will bless. We, we can't stand it when God blesses other people, and we seek to tear them down. Not only will we seek to tear them down, we refuse to lift them up because we think that's going to take something away from us. That's not true. Lord, Lord God, y'all need to hear me today. We need to demonstrate real love. We need to demonstrate agape love. Many of us still functioning on what Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. All right? Listen, some of us need to grow up and become a man and put away childish things. We need to lay hold on real love, what real love is. Look at this 13th chapter. Amen. And make it applicable to our own lives. 
Not that don't worry about what somebody else is doing. Make it applicable to your life. Are you uh, behaving the way God wants you to have behave? Are you thinking the way God wants you to think? Are you acting toward other people the way uh, God wants you to act? Listen, faith and hope is uh, necessary attributes because they uh, bring us to God, okay? We got to have faith to get there. We got to have faith in order to make God real. And we got to have hope to keep this thing alive in us. But then you see, uh, uh, love helps us to behave like God. We can have faith and we can have hope, okay? Bring us to God. But then if we don't have love, it won't help us to behave like God. We need to believe and we need the behavior. Help us somebody. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Yes, he says, I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away, yes, childish things. Help me somebody. Yes, uh, and I begin to act like a spiritually mature individual. And uh, when uh, you understand uh, 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 that uh, true love supersedes spirituality, uh, and when you understand that true love, yes, uh, uh, supersedes uh, status, uh, then uh, you're ready to understand that true love supersedes and operates in uh, sacrifice. Every Holy Spirit, uh, yes, uh, true love operates, operates in uh, sacrifice. Uh, how do you know that, preacher? Uh, because uh, Jesus uh, is our ultimate example. Yes, uh, true love uh, operates uh, in uh, making sacrifices. Again, that's what the first uh, few verses in chapter 13 is about. When you give your body, uh, yes, that's all you have to give. And if you do it with the right motive, yes, it's the ultimate sacrifice. Yes. And uh, if you give all your goods uh, uh, to feed the poor, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, you're giving all your worldly goods. Uh, that is a sacrifice. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, if you uh, give, uh, I heard the hymn writer say, when you give uh, the best of your service, uh, telling the world that the Savior has come. Uh, he says, uh, don't uh, be discouraged uh, when men don't believe you. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, he'll understand. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, he'll say, well done. Uh, uh, oh, Lord, uh, I'm glad uh, that uh, uh, true love is superior and it supersedes uh, spirituality. Uh, true love, uh, yes, uh, supersedes status. Uh, and uh, true love uh, operates uh, in uh, sacrifice. Uh, bread, God from Zion, uh, oh Lord. Uh, Oh, Lord, uh, love, uh, yes, uh, is uh, uh, above all things. Uh, he says, uh, though there be faith, uh, though there be hope, uh, and though there be love, uh, they will, uh, faith and hope will uh, come to an end, uh, but love will continue on. Uh, Yes, because love uh, is prominent. Uh, love is 
preeminent uh, and love is permanent. Uh, great God from Zion, uh, it's not Eros love uh, and it's not Phileo love uh, and it's not Stage love, uh, but it's agape love uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, this is a true confession, y'all. Uh, when it's all said and done, uh, uh, love uh, will still be functioning. Uh, agape love, uh, it's an everlasting love. Uh, uh, love, uh, Paul says, never fails. Uh, and why? Is that true uh, that love uh, never fails? Uh, it never fails uh, because God never fails. Uh, uh, anybody hearing me today? Uh, love, uh, oh, love, uh, love never fails. Uh, yes, uh, when it's all said and done, uh, love uh, will be there. Uh, love is there in the beginning uh, and love is there right now uh, and love will be there uh, in the end uh, i tell you it's everlasting uh, it's permanent uh, great god uh, from zion uh, love will always be uh, i'm so glad uh, when uh, nothing else uh, would help uh, it was love uh, that lifted me uh, good god from zion uh, jesus uh, the great de demonstrator of love uh, he said uh, mm -hmm, uh, make me a body uh, and i'll go down uh, and i'll redeem man uh, for uh, you god uh, for your father, but, but you got to make me a body uh, so I can go down uh, and identify with mankind. Uh, he did so, uh, and he came down uh, through 42 generations. Uh, didn't he do so? Uh, yes, uh, and I heard, uh, I heard, uh, oh Lord, uh, I heard uh, uh, the writer say, uh, for God uh, demonstrated his love for us uh, and that while we were yet in our sins, uh, Christ died for you and I. Uh, he died, uh, didn't he die? Uh, he made uh, the ultimate sacrifice uh, with the right motive. Uh, he did it uh, because he loved me. Uh, he did it because he loved you. Uh, he did it uh, well, uh, without expectation, uh, but he just did it. Uh, and uh, uh, now that we know he loved us, uh, he loved us uh, with the right motive. Uh, we ought to love him back. Uh, yes, we should. Uh, we should love God back uh, because he loved us first. Uh, it was love uh, that allowed him uh, to go to a uh, rugged cross uh, and uh, it was love uh, that uh, uh, caused him to allow uh, wicked men to put a spear in his side uh, and spikes in his feet uh, and uh, crown of thorns uh, on his head. It, it was love, uh, yes it was, uh, that caused him to hang there uh, from the sixth uh, to the ninth hour. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, it was love, uh, yes, uh, that caused him to suffer, uh, uh, to bleed. Uh, it uh, was love uh, that caused him uh, to go down uh, in a, in a, in a bar of tomb. Uh, and to stay there three days and three nights. Uh, yes, uh, it was love. Uh, good God of mine, uh, uh, the love of the Father. Uh, after three days and three nights, uh, he got up, uh, didn't he get up uh, from the grave? Uh, and he said, I got all power in my hands. Uh, the greatest force on this earth is love. Uh, it's the power of love. Uh, I heard, uh, yes, uh, 
Al Green say, uh, a long time ago, uh, uh, love uh, will make you do right, uh, and love uh, will make you do wrong. Uh, love, uh, yes, uh, make you stay out all night, uh, and but love uh, will also make you come home. Uh, love, uh, love, uh, I thank God uh, for the power of the of love, uh, yeah, somebody ought to say yes, uh, say yes, uh, oh, say yes, uh, say yes, uh, thank God, uh, thank God, uh, God is love. And that's what Paul was trying to tell them at the church in Corinth. He said, I couldn't speak to you as unto uh, spirituals, but I'd speak to you as carnal. I speak to you as babes, he says, because there's still envy and strife among you. There's still childish behavior among you. Yes, consider these true confessions a real love and move forward to try to emulate what God says true love is all about. Be a follower of me, Paul says, as I am a follower of God. Paul said, ain't nobody spoke with more tongues than me. Nobody prophesied more than me. <laughs> he said, but my motive has been love. And so whatever we do, we got to do it with a motive of love. No matter the movement, we got to do it with the motive of love. Somebody don't know true love today. They only know the erotic, the phileo. You don't know what true love really is, the unconditional love. I, I love you just because. Amen. And that's what Jesus did for us. He loved us just because. He knows all about our wickedness and our waywardness. He knows all about the, why we do what we do. Matter of fact, he said well, he knows what we're going to do even before we do it. He even knows the thought before it comes in our mind. But yet he loves us. That's unconditional love. That's agape love. Somebody never experienced that kind of love before. But I'm telling you today, you can experience true love. You can experience real love, not eros. Yes, it, that, that's falls short of agape, not phileo. It falls short of agape. I'm talking about a divine, true love, true love that only God can demonstrate to you, and he can do it. Somebody say, well, uh, God can't love me at night. God can't go to bed with me at night, but God knows the person that needs to be there with you to go to bed with you at night. God will take, make sure that you get the right person in your love, in your life, in order to do that. And so you, you need to hang out with God. You need to hang out in his word and let God guide you to the person that you should have. Yes, and he'll guide you with a perfect love. He'll guide you with a perfect hand so that you can experience the love that he has for all mankind. Amen. Never experienced this kind of love, but would like to experience it. All you got to do is acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That's all you got to do. The Bible said, if I will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, that's all you got to do is confess Jesus Christ by faith. Confess him by faith and believe that when you do it, it's going to happen. Have hope that when you do it, it's going to happen. And the reality of true love will become a part of your life. Would you accept Jesus today and know finally true love in your life 
Would you do that? Would you acknowledge him as your savior to as many as received him, got to receive him by faith, to as many as received him, to them he gave power, amen, to come become a son and daughter of God. If you'll do that today, amen, you let us know and somebody will be there to con contact you, hallelujah. Never accepted him, but would like to do so today. You can do it right after I finish this broadcast. You, you were part of the church, but got away. Want to renew your fellowship? Amen. Just make contact with the information. The numbers is on the screen when I leave. There'll be somebody, amen, on the other end that will help you uh, to do that. Need Christ? Need a, need a, 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 a church family? New Sardis would love to have you to be a part of our church. Amen. There are people there that are genuine and love you. Amen. Now some will genuinely love you. I'm not talking about hypocrisy, but the real deal. Amen. Amen. If you desire to, amen, to be uh, a part of our church family. Amen. All right. When the information comes on the screen, amen, you can respond accordingly. Amen. And we'll rejoice and praise God 